guys, here's Madame OK. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being a part of it. If you enjoy watching the videos, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe as well as to hit the like button. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye! Hello guys, here's Madame OK and today we will be painting in style of Mr. Van Gogh using his uh, iris painting, one of them of course. Uh, this one has lots of blue, green and white and therefore I have a palette prepared here with all those different colors. Um, lots of white, blue, uh, green as well as a little bit of yellow and burnt sienna. As you notice, I have also two markers, blue and green, and I will show you a small trick what we can do to help ourselves while working. Uh, we will use palette knives, brush, and I have some other brushes here as well, but we start with the sketch. So let's put the image on the side, and again, I don't need to do it exactly the same way. I'll I want to just simply uh, learn how to paint in his style using lots of lots of texture or heavy texture and making the shape simplified. So as, as I can see, um, the vase is not really big. And again, my paper is not as long as um, his painting. So I just have to make those adjustments. So the vase is uh, set up quite uh, centered. So that's what I will do this round, that shape again. I don't even need to be exact. I can see that this ending is coming just to the edge here, yeah, right the bottom. So, okay, so I'm just bringing the vase down here a little bit more. And again, notice, even when I'm not precise, it doesn't matter. Those lines will be covered later on. Okay, so that will be my vase's base, a rounded shape. And then I can work with those additional parts. It's not like a vase, I can what is it i don't even know fantastic this has to be a little bit rounder and then we have the handle here coming somewhere here rounding up again it's up to us how we would present it right this a little bit you can see uh, burnt sienna used on the side to show the inside of this particular handle this has to have two line this part we don't even see this one this one very fast coming here a little bit more going here and then um definitely we need ground make sure that it's exactly on the same size wow a distance fantastic and then our beautiful irises so i will look for the grouping so i see one grouping of the flowers definitely there I can hear the rain splashing on our sunroof here in the studio. Such a beautiful day. I love rain. So anyway, there's another part coming here. And again, I'm improvising. Um, I definitely have the stems of my beautiful flowers. La la la. Another one here. Another one there. And then from there, I can think, okay, those flowers are coming definitely here. There will be some stems coming Yeah, See, very simple fight. Very simple fight. Oh, like this. Another one here. Another one coming there. Something here happening. Something there. Nothing we have just this stem, but definitely. Yeah, and now we can look at the flowers. So we have the grouping of the flowers. I will go C1. It's always this um, particular shape that you have to follow. Each flower type has a specific shape. So you have to just capture the essence and that will be enough to represent this particular type of flowers. See, we have a beautiful iris coming. There, so again, I have to capture the shape of the patterns, the most important, another pattern will follow there, another one somewhere here, and that's okay, then another one, I can see it's coming, it's like this, so I'm going one, I'm going with another one here, another one there, another one there, fantastic. Okay, 
fantastic. So we have plenty of information. Now it's the trick. And the trick would be that I will use those two markers, believe me or not, and I will look for the lines. So for example, this line definitely will be done in blue. And I just want to make sure that it's really the same horizontal, the continuation of the same horizontal line. Very good. Now my picture done the same way. Right? So we show one plane, another plane for the handle. A little bit of it here and then we round it up. Notice um, I do it because um, Van Gogh used lots of lots of outlines, right? That's like a hallmark of his works. And um, if we want to, since we will be using palette knives in certain sections will be very difficult to create those lines. So right away, right away we will be outlining um, them with or going back to the lines that we created and making sure that we outline or go on top of those lines with marker. You don't need to do it. You can use later the brush and that's okay. It will, be, will take a little bit um, time, especially when the smaller your canvas the more difficult it will be to create those lines, but of course you can do it. And that's what he done. He didn't use markers. It's just the trick that I use here. Like this. And then I'm looking, I still have blue. I don't need to use so much green. There will be sections where definitely I can use green, especially at the ends of my, of my leaves. Right here for sure, see? okay so time now to work and with the colors of course now i will use a little bit of pink underneath of white here and under the need of green i will use yellow ochre that i have in my tube here so i apply a little bit of it there on the ground and then i don't want to have it really very strong but i do also want that the paint will dry fast i don't have really very much time i want to do it fast and be very efficient so what i will do i'll use now some water brush and i would move this paint very fast again i don't want to use too much water because i want that the paint will dry very very fast it's just the uh, first coat and i think it will help the green look better so remember most of the artists didn't paint on white they always thought about the primary colors i will not use the same color in this section uh, there where we have the uh, background i move to another color and the color will be pink believe me or not So if you go on the flowers, that's okay too. Okay, now that the corner, very good. So now we have to work on the colors of the background as well as on the colors of the stand, which will be the green color. So I let the paint dry a little bit. Well, as you can see, our paint that we used as primer it's almost dry, this one is, this one almost. So I think we are ready to paint and I'm so excited about that. Uh, I will have a number of brushes as well as palette knives to work. Now I will start with palette knives. So what I need to do, I will start with the white. And I will start with the white because it takes so much space in the painting. I will use my palette knife that is of the um, diamond shape and right away apply it on my paper you will use canvas of course now notice that um, my size is a little bit smaller I mean you will use I hope a little bit larger scale what I do I'm going around my flowers and leaves and that's what I'm applying um, as you can see um, the strokes are not very elongated I use the um, tip of my palette knife and I really want to show that there is a texture so that means it's like a one patch on top of another patch very short one 
So you're slightly moving it on one side. Notice that I work uh, starting from the left side and moving towards the, uh, the right. And the reason for it is that I'm right-handed. For those of you who are left-handed, make sure that you start from the right side and you move towards the left side. Okay? So this way you will not run into the problem of moving your arm or your hand onto the paint. That would be not good. So you see? Like this. Uh, we have some space left there. So I'm also will be going. Right now this is a larger space. I definitely can, um, I call it butter the surface. And uh, with it later, I will go with those separate strokes on the top. So this way I will speed up my painting time. Good, it looks already. So I don't, I don't want to lose my line, so I'm scraping a little bit of the paint, and then I'm moving to the other part. Almost done with the white. Ooh, la 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 la. See there. Wow, that takes really time, but that's a painting. We can do it just in five minutes. Fantastic, so we have plenty of, well, sorry, just a little bit more of white here and there. And guys, we are ready to move to the other section, which will be applying the green. So now I have my white, uh, let's see, I can actually use it as well. Okay, so that's what I have now. There, I lose a little bit of a gray. I want to show you how intense it is. See, it's very, very powerful color. So I'm mixing with white, I have to. And then I get the right color for my painting, like this. Okay, so I can butter the surface with it and then I can come back to it and just create this nice, beautiful strokes. Now I have to be a little bit more careful because I want to get the shape correctly. So a little bit more paint and then I'm moving on this side. Good. I'll apply a little bit of yellow because I slightly want to give um, this warmer feel to the green. So very small amount, you see, just like this. And just bring it here and there. Not a huge amount. Again, we don't want to change the green too much. Oop, I have still the edge of the green, dark green. I don't want to have it. I like the lighter version. And then slight of this yellow moving here and there. Very good. Now we have to move to the leaves. And the same way, we want to get some of the beautiful green on the top and then we'll maybe mix a little bit of the yellow into it. I think that will be okay. Just a little bit. Right. So you see what I have here. Green, yellow, a uh, tiny bit of yellow and lots of white. Okay, I'm coming to our flowers to create those beautiful strong stems. Where well, I have them, I definitely have them. So I will start from just finding out where they are. And I can see that this part, let me see, we went a little bit too high. So I have to lower it. And right away with this paint, whoop, I got something on it. With this paint, I will establish the shape of my picture. Right, good. And now the stems are coming. Mm -hmm. This 
green there we see definitely there do you think we have enough probably not Pro not yet not yet we are almost done with the green at least at this stage but there's still a couple of more things that had to be completed like a leaf coming there there will be another one with more yellow notice so right away introduce some of the yellow there a little bit there maybe even here next to that next to the stem here a little bit more yellow there so do i need to have it all some yellow will come here oh there's a stem here but then a little bit of yellow will come here as well there and i certainly can have it here so now I can use my blue and with the blue I can create the differentiation among my stems. See like this. Like this. Even when you want to, you can go on the top in some of those leaves at this stage or later on, it's up to you, and bring some of those outlines. See with just the edge. Remember we can always move to using the brush for the stems and for the outline of the leaves. Okay, I leave it like this for now and then I move to my blue colors because I need to have my flowers. Oh la la, I have lots of paint on me. Yeah. Good. So the blue is beautiful the way it is. So I will first apply it the way and then I and then I will go for some white. I don't need to have it too much of it, remember. Doesn't need to be just enough to be able later to move some other paint into it but not when you have too much it will be difficult the other paint will disappear while when you have too little you will not get the effect so it has to be a balance and have to figure it out on your own just enough to cover the surface but not keeping it semi-transparent so that you can see the base no so like this and that's fun that's for sure you see how much the marker help us to see where we have to go with the paint it was really a good idea like this and then i let it as long as it's wet i still can work on the other parts and when it will be semi semi dry then i will move with some other colors into it See, I change now to the Taylor blue from the cobalt. I'm moving to the Taylor to get this darker, darker color, and I think it really works well for our flowers. See, just then a little bit of yellow, but I started and finished those parts. I want to just show you how will I differentiate a little bit of those beautiful um, irises in the front. So bringing some of the darker color and some lighter colors will do it for us. Okay. Ooh la la. Then we have such a busyness happening there. A little bit more of it there. Mm -hmm. Now, because the paint is wet, some white mixes in it, some... Uh, even green and what is happening certain things happen by an accident you have to just notice them uh, those accident and turn them into the positive ones into the accident happy accidents right so remember that's what what shows that you're a good artist okay. see even here i still think that we can get a little bit darker so that needs more tail on oh la la With a little bit more white now so i'm mixing my paint the cobalt and whatever is the mixture in it and now i can certainly certainly develop my flowers whoa look at this you see we add different dimension so again my cobalt mixed just with white I'm like bringing it there and i'm very very selective i don't want to have it too much otherwise i will destroy the effect 
So I have to just look for um, the whole composition. And therefore, like I told you, it's important that you don't rush with developing one, one element to perfection at a time. You work on everything together. This way we will have a beautiful balance. much so I'm just moving it here and I'm right away applying it between a little bit darker paint this is good but this needs to have some of the shapes okay a little bit of the contrast see and then back good now something color oh what's going on there now i need to get some green oh wait a second maybe not maybe i will just look for some yellow see now i can add a little bit more of the yellow there and i think it will contribute to the beauty of my painting so like this and then inside of the flowers because for example definitely here i can have more yellow i'm thinking about bringing it a little bit more there I think about, let's see, next to my flower, somewhere there, and then even a little bit there. Good. Uh, this space is empty, and before I put brown here, I think I can afford to have some yellow. Wow! I'm not so sure about the shape, so I'm still coming here. And then I need to have some of my yellow paint there that turns always remember since this is everything gets uh, the flowers are done in blue so when i put some yellow on them well they turn they turn to green so it's perfect see i can really develop everything the way i want oh boop, boop, and place it here so you see i'm creating like stems just applying yellow into them good uh the other one that i need to have is definitely i need brown so my brown will come as a warm color, like see, just to bring in a little bit more life into my painting. Not too much, again, there's a balance here. And the brown represents sometimes a dry skin um, of the leaf. See, definitely here. Yeah. See what it does, it just brightens the painting. Wow, so much fun. And I think I can. I can add it definitely somewhere there. Now with my other parts, I'm not so sure. Well, they can have it there. I would like to have another leaf here. I think I would like to. Okay, so what I will do, I will apply a little bit of this paint here. And I think I would bring the leaf here. Yeah, it has to be remembered, it's a specific shape, so we can't to lose blows i mean we can but i think that is good yeah it breaks the space the monotony of the space how i like to call it okay so i'm going to my blue and i want to repeat those lines good and then i have to bring some of the brown here and that's okay Brown is coming. To move it a little bit more like this. Perfect little bit of yellow. You see, it will not harm it. Yeah, that will add and some white just to lighten it. Good. And then I have to go for the white because this is a little bit too thick, right? And then this part here. Remember that we also have some of those outlines of the leaves and I'm yeah whatever i can change and i think that i should i do it mm -hmm. what do you think about this section i think we need to get a little bit darker and maybe i just use brown for myself because i think that's just too much of the same so just bring it there will help. I also think that in some sections, even here, I still can work. 
And you know what is happening with our paintings? That's looking really, really good. Oh, you need to emphasize. Again, brush will do it. Make sure later that you wash the brush right away, otherwise you will lose it. You can emphasize some of those shapes of the flowers, if there is such a need. Like for example, here I still can come uh, with a little bit more precision for some of them, like give them the endings. The same, a bit more there, and then it's a lighter version somewhere here. Then I can do it now. I like this green, but I need to bring a little bit more emphasis. And you know what? And I think we will we can call it quit. I think we've done a very good job. We should be very pleased with our results and. Um, do you think that this is still a little bit, I think we have to lighten it. It's a little bit of brown, not too much, especially on the side here. And then I need the blue. I need to bring some of my blue here. So maybe still on my brush. I don't think that this one is too thick. So I will just bring some white, definitely there. A little bit more over there too as well. And guys, She's still skimming it up. Whoop, I have to use more pen. Good. And then slightly still more blue dividing those two parts. Actually, I like it very much. Let me see one more time. Just a little bit more of this color. As you can see, this looks quite nice. I don't even need this, but I will cut. I like the painting very much. I hope that you enjoyed the process uh, working on it with me. And now you will be ready to work on your own painting of irises. Have a good day guys and see you next time. Bye.